so today our topic is the thoracic aorta we will discuss about the thoracic aorta so first the introduction the aorta it arises from the base of the left ventricle then it ascends between the pulmonary artery on the left and the right atrium on the right side and it form ascending aorta the ascending aorta then goes upwards and backwards it forms an arc that is known as aortic arc and then the aorta will continue as posterior aorta yeah descending aorta when the descending aorta or posterior aorta it will cross seventh or the eighth thoracic vertebrae then it will continue as a thoracic aorta the thoracic aorta then passes through the hiatus aorticus and then enter into the abdominal cavity and it continues as abdominal aorta the thoracic aorta it is related to both lungs while passing through the posterior mediastinum and it leaves the impression that are in the form of the grooves on the superior border of each lung so when the thoracic aorta when it passes through the thoracic cavity it is related with both the lungs and it produces impressions on the superior border of both the lungs these imp impressions are in the form of the grooves now this groove it is deeper on the left lung so there is a groove on the right lung and there is a groove on the left lung the groove on the left lung it is deeper as compared to the groove that is present on the right lung now the collateral branches of the thoracic aorta there are four collateral branches which arises from the thoracic aorta one is known as bronchial artery then esophageal artery intercostal artery and phrenic artery now we will discuss them one by one first is the bronchial artery the bronchial artery it is a visceral artery and it is unpaired so bronchial artery it will supply to the organ visceral organ and it arises singly that is why it is unpaired this bronchial artery it is the nutritional artery of the lung that means provides the nutrition and this bronchial artery it arises from the inferior face of the aorta so when the bronchial artery arises it descends across the left face of the esophagus and then it reaches to the terminal part of the trachea and divides into right and the left bronchial artery so the bronchial artery arises from the inferior face then it descends across the left face of the esophagus and travels towards the terminal part of the trachea and divides into right and the left bronchial arteries now each bronchial artery then reaches to the root of the corresponding lung that means the right bronchial artery it goes towards the right lung and the left bronchial artery it will reach to the root of the left lung and then each bronchial artery it will enter into the lungs so before entering into the lung each bronchial artery it will detach some branches that supply to the bronchial lymph node pulmonary artery and mediastinum so before entering into the lung each bronchial artery it gives branches we supply to the bronchial lymph node pulmonary pleura and mediastinum then 
in the lungs each bronchial artery it will divides or ramify as per the ramification of the bronchus that means when the trachea bifurcates into two bronchi then bronchi will bifurcate into then um, bronchioles primary bronchi then secondary bronchi tertiary bronchi respiratory bronchioles respiratory bronchioles respiratory bronchial fill alveolar sac and finally into alveolar so each bronchial artery it will ramify and it will follow the ramification of the bronchus this was all about the bronchial artery now the second collateral branch of the thoracic aorta it is known as esophageal artery it is again it is a visceral artery and it is unpaired so from the term it indicates that it is esophageal that means it supplies to the esophagus so this esophageal artery it arises from the ventral face of the aorta after the bronchial artery so when the esophageal artery arises from the aorta it goes downwards and it gives branches to the thoracic part of the esophagus and the posterior mediastinum lymph node and lungs that means the esophageal artery it supplies to the thoracic part of the esophagus it supplies to the posterior mediastinum lymph node and it supplies to the lungs now sometimes for the bronchial artery and esophageal artery we use a common term bronchoesophageal artery is used bronchoesophageal artery why because the bronchial artery it gives the branch to the esophagus and the esophagus itself it gives a branch that supplies to the lungs so that's why the bronchoesophageal artery sometimes used it for the both now coming to the third collateral branch that is known as intercostal artery the intercostal artery it is the parietal artery and paired the intercostal artery they are generally 13 pairs 13 pairs of intercostal arteries the first pair that arises from the dorsal artery then second to fifth arises from the subcostal artery the dorsal artery and the subcostal artery these are the intrathoracic branches of the axillary artery and the remaining eight pairs of the intercostal artery they arises from the thoracic aorta now the intercostal artery they arise from the dorsal face of the aorta and they arise in pairs at regular intervals so when the intercostal artery arises from the aorta they run upwards across the body of the thoracic vertebrae and dorsal sympathetic trunk they cross vena hemi azygous on the left side also so on reaching the upper part of the intercostal space each intercostal artery it gives off the branches we supply to the pleura and the vertebra and then divides into subcostal artery and sorry dorso spinal branch and intercostal branch so the dorso spinal branch then divides into the spinal and the muscular branches so first of all the intercostal artery the intercostal artery then on the proximal part of the intercostal space it divides into dorso spinal branch and intercostal branch the dorso spinal branch then divides into spinal and muscular branches this uh, spinal branch sub enter into the spinal canal and it supplies to the spinal cord and then it joins the inferior spinal artery 
now the muscular branches the muscular branch which arises from the torso spinal branch this muscular branches as the term indicate the supplies to spinal muscles of the dorsal region now the next branch which is the intercostal branch the intercostal branch is again the branch of the intercostal artery this is larger among the two branches of the intercostal artery the intercostal branch it runs through the group that is present on the posterior border of the rib along with intercostal vein and intercostal nerve so when the intercostal branch passes or runs through the groove of the rib along with the vein and the nerve so on reaching the distal part of the intercostal space it gives a perforating branch or perforating intercostal branch the perforating branch then it supplies to the serratus magnus abdominal muscles and skin while as the terminal branch that anastomoses with the internal thoracic and musculophrenic arteries the internal thoracic and musculophrenic arteries they are again the intrathoracic branches of the axillary artery now coming to the last collateral branch that is the phrenic arteries generally the phrenic artery their number as well as their origin that varies so the phrenic artery when it is single it arises directly from the thoracic aorta in front of the hiatus aorticus and when there are multiple phrenic arteries the then the phrenic artery also arises from the celiac artery they also arise from the left duodenal artery they arise from the intercostal artery and lumbar artery so the phrenic artery their number and origin it varies so when single they arise from thoracic aorta or when multiple they arise from celiac left duodenal artery intercostal artery or lumbar artery so here in the diagram you can see this is the heart this is the left view of the thoracic cavity this is the heart here you can see this is the posterior aorta descending aorta and this is the thoracic aorta these are the intercostal arteries which arise from the dorsal face of the thoracic aorta and here a branch which arises from the ventral face that is the bronchial artery and then here is the esophageal artery and just in front of the hiatus aorticus here is the phrenic artery so these were the different collateral branches of the thoracic aorta thank you